Hey guys, John from JBR here again with this week's tech video. Today we're going to be taking a close up look at one of these extreme rotaries, two piece 13B center bearing eccentric shafts. Now, there's probably a lot of you out there that have never seen one of these shafts before and they're definitely not something that you see pop up too often either because they're not that easy to get your hands on. Rowan at Extreme Rotaries usually only makes a small batch of around 30 shafts each year and those are usually all pre-sold before they're finished. Another reason you don't see too many of them is because they're not that cheap either. Price-wise, they come in at just under 5,000 Aussie dollars, but when you see one up close and see the quality of the finish and all the small details, you'll understand why they cost as much as they do. But in saying that, there's also a few really cool things that get done behind the scenes that you can't see. That most of you wouldn't even know about unless I mentioned it. Material, that comes out of Europe and just to get it here to Australia it usually takes anywhere from about six to eight months. Um, and all up from start to finish, there's three totally different heat treatment processes that each shaft goes through. First, they're heat treated, then stress relieved, then case hardened, so the roller bearing can run directly on the shaft and doesn't need a sleeve, which as far as I'm aware, these are the only two piece cranks on the market that you're able to do that with. Another thing that I think is really cool is they're actually ground twice. What they do is grind them a little bit oversized first, then they shove them outside in the weather to sit for a few months, which stress relieves the metal. Then they bring them back inside and um, grind them all to finish size right at the very end. All the grinding is done on some two and a half million dollar Swiss machine. It grinds all the threads as well, so they're super smooth, which is very noticeable when you thread the front nut on. They're all individually assembled and hand checked before they go out the door as well. So now you have a bit of an insight as to how much work goes into these things. It is easy to see why they are so popular and sought after. Okay, now the reason they are called a two-piece shaft is because this front section slides off just like that. And the reason that needs to be able to slide off is so we can get this roller bearing here onto the middle of the shaft. The whole idea of the center bearing is to support the eccentric shaft in the middle so the shaft doesn't bend and flex like a standard one piece type shaft does when you're making big power. For those of you that haven't seen it, I did do a Facebook post about what happens when a one piece shaft flexes a few months back. If you wanted to go back and take a look and learn a bit more about it, this here's the bearing. It gets mounted into the center plate. For the bearing to fit though, the center plate needs to be machined and also a groove gets machined in the center plate that fits this circlip. And what this circlip does it holds the bearing in place so once it's in there it can't back out. When you buy a shaft they come with this instruction sheet which has all the dimensions and sizes that your machinist is going to need but it is something that should only be attempted by someone who's a good machinist who's got half an idea and who has a good accurate milling machine or if you want to get really fancy you can now buy a billet boss center plate just like this one that I prepared earlier that already has the center bearing installed into the plate ready to go. On the billet boss plates they don't use a circlip. The bearing itself goes into the plate and then the face plates go either side of the bearing so it can't go anywhere. Okay now looking at the rest of the crank the roller bearing itself is lubricated by this little oil hole here which is fed oil from the main oil journal that runs through the middle of the shaft. The front section it's located or aligned is probably a better way of putting it by this key 
um, and then the front section is locked onto the main shaft and held in place by this taper. Big front nut, um, it gets torqued up to 250 foot pound and once you've done that sucker up it isn't going anywhere. You've probably noticed that these shafts use a big 20B style nut on the front and not a bolt like a factory shaft does. A couple of reasons for that. First reason is so you have a large enough thread that can handle being cranked up to 250 foot pound in the first place. Second reason is it helps add um, more material and strength to the front of the crank um, by keeping it nice and solid, i.e. it doesn't have a hole drilled through the end um, where you would fit the bolt like you would see on a normal 13B shaft. Now, there are a handful of things that are super important that you need to pay attention to when you use these cranks. The first one, and probably the most important one, is making sure the centre bearing is mounted perfectly in the centre of the centre plate. I know that sounds like common sense, but I've seen a few engines now where the bearing has been machined off centre just a little bit. And when that happens, it puts side load on the crank, right where the taper is, and which tries to unseat the front lobe off that taper. If that's not picked up before the engine goes together, you're going to end up destroying the crank, and when that happens, more often than not, it's gonna trash the rest of the engine at the same time, which, of course, none of us wanna to have to go through that. Next thing, if you look here, that the holes drilled into the rotor journals. Those people who are familiar with what a factory shaft looks like will notice they're a bit different um, in size to a standard shaft. This means that the weight of the journals is different, which in turn means that the rotating assembly has to be balanced totally differently to how you would balance a standard assembly. Third thing um, is the correct way to pull apart uh, these engines when you're tearing them down. Once the front nut has been torqued down onto the taper, the two sections get locked together pretty fucking tight and sometimes they're really difficult to pull apart. But, Extreme Rotaries have made this slide hammer set, especially for the job. If you look closely here, You can see the front and rear rotor loads have been threaded to suit the slide hammer. Now, to get the crank apart, screw the slide hammer into each load, one on the front and one on the rear. Then what you're aiming to do is slide them both away from each other so the slide hammer's hit at exactly the same time. And if you can manage to get that right, it will shock the front section off the taper. By doing it this way, it keeps everything in line and true, and things generally come apart relatively easy. If you do use just one slide hammer and heat the shaft up around the taper with the oxy torch, which a lot of guys do, you do risk bending the shaft, so I would recommend not doing it that way if you can avoid it. And the very last tip, and again, this is something that's super important, is to make sure that everything bolted to the front of the shaft is running true. If it's not, the front of the crank will be doing a hula dance, which will vibrate more and more the harder you rev the engine, which puts a heap of stress and load onto the taper again. When you assemble the engine, you always want to put a dial indicator on the front pulley and be 100% sure everything's running true. Any more than one thou run out is too much. If it's got one more than one thou run out, you need to disassemble everything and find out why. Don't just tighten it up and hope for the best, otherwise it will bite you in the ass. I think that pretty much covers most of the important things that you need to know about using these cranks. I am going to make another video in the near future showing how I dummy assemble these engines to check everything, uh, which will go into a lot more detail, so keep an eye out for that one. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you all learnt something from it. Um, if you have any questions, just put them in the comments section below. And like always, I will do my best to answer them. Thanks again, and uh, 
see you all next time.